Hata za zingine ukitembea kwa barabara unaweza shangaa na ushindwe. Kwa ni kadhiri ndereva sikuizi ni hoka. Kwa nini hoka zua wachukuliwa waende kwa marathon? Lakini hokas ubidua waende mbio akifikia ile kitu yenyitampata na hapo nyuma. Over the past two episodes of Kanjo Kingdom, we've shown you the amount of money taken from hawkers and informal vendors. Behind the bribes is a cabal of city inspectorate officers who run the extortion scheme. They collect millions and are headed by one of their own, a man referred to on the street as Wasiwasi. But for the extortion to work on these streets, you need to carry a big stick. This week, Africa Uncensored shows you the link between the extortion, the violence, and the murders of hawkers that have not been investigated. But actually, the hawkers who come, and in a majority of the cases, the ones who sustain severe injuries, uh, they report uh, a case where they had to pay a certain levy of money. They describe these individuals who collect money from them. And why so many of Nairobi City's hawkers are keenly following a murder trap. Most afternoons, if you wait long enough, you'll see Jacinta Mothoni's slight frame weave through downtown Nairobi's packed pavements. Her friends call her Sony. She wants to claim her spot on Tom Boyer Street early. It's one of the city's busiest streets, teeming with prospective customers. Her spot is the entrance to a building, a place where she doesn't have to constantly be on her feet, only getting up when buyers come by. Also strategically positioned at the foot of the staircase onto this footpath in Gara, Carol Menjo waits for customers. Even though they hawk clothes within three kilometers of one another, they probably haven't met. Tens of thousands of other hawkers line the highway down from where Carol sits in Gara to the CBD where Sony is. But they have more in common than they'd think. <laughs> A week into the broadcasting of this series, Carol was assaulted by two officers from Nairobi's city inspectorate. She was brought here to the casualty ward of the Kenyatta National Hospital. She had swellings at the back of her head and was unable to get up by the time we arrived. We met Sonny, another victim of violence, heading to her spot from the Kenyatta National Hospital. In her hands, she's carrying the results of a scan of her liver. It's not good. The blood clot can only be removed through an expensive operation, one that she can't afford. When I came to Susa, I got pigo ma pizza ma pizza. Pizza mingi sana ni pigo. The CT scan. I came to a clot for a liver. Susa, I found the opportunity to do something. I need to see any cases. Kama last year, I did one more scan. I did karibu mozimzi pa bila kazi. We interviewed Carol two days after she had been hit. She also had no choice but to get back to work. Carol 
na ujua akaanza atakufamia ni time tena maybe unaweza famiwa leo makesho kutoka kazi unapoteza nani umeinua kidogo down the road from carol is boni he has the last encounter with the city inspectorate officers written all over his face and body personally say even it's a uh, one week since me recover juzi walinishika it's only i used my mouth because my uncle works with them then they had to just leave me because of my uncle don ko shane damage magoti i got their knives on my eye over here nile tu yani god god was on my side that day because i was to like because they told me the first thing kijana sema umekufa na walinigonga tu sana being honest they got me from the school na walinigonga tu sana first thing if you enter in that garikao first thing it's your pocket your phone your pocket how is the, the money you're carrying in your pocket and then like they take the cash they take your phone hata kani kuachilia ukikuachilia they will leave you somewhere mbali sana after wame ku damage hata kujaribu kuambia civilians wengine wa kusaidia inakuwa ni ngumu because when you make gong you look like a thief na nikaanjoa amekufanya hivyo none of them will be reporting their assault to the police in spite of the fact that they can identify the people who beat them ukipiga nini au uonange yani hakuna action wanachukua bado unaona wale mawala tu watu wameua watu bado wako kwa barabara sasa yangu ni kugongwa sitakuwa sasa hata hakuna kitu nafanya but when they see them they run like me i my This is a reaction of all hawkers to the inspectorate. But what seems like random acts of violence is very structured. Sasa hiki kitu inafanyika. Sasa hiyo akikushika hata ni message wanaachia mahokazi wengine. Kitu wanakufanyia manze uwezi kuja tena ati uanze kuhoka. Because you'll stay like 2 uh, 3 weeks hivi bila kuja kutafuta ndo yako na wibi mtu. Unakuja wewe mwenyewe kuja keleka kazi at least upate haki yako lakini they are not on our side. In the last episode of Kanjo Kingdom, we unmasked five officers from Nairobi's city inspectorate who have for at least one year been extorting bribes from hawkers and informal traders. Jacqueline Kamami alias Kamada, Bernard Muli alias Gadaudau, also known on the streets as a limping one, Julia Socheng, Alfred Marenya, and their boss, Benson Akasi Ambani also known as Wasiwasi, Wasi, were all secretly recorded on camera by a team of unnamed whistleblowers for over a year, extorting bribes from hawkers with impunity. <laughs> So we went to have a conversation with them uh, where they do their business, uh, you know, downtown. And at the end of the, you uh, know, hundreds of, of, of them turned up because this was the first opportunity they had to discuss human rights, their rights, and their plight vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the city uh, authorities. And at the end of that conversation, we were convinced that the problem was more serious than we, we had thought, that the problem was deeper than the three, four cases we were getting per year. And so we decided then to commission a research to establish, uh, you know, how deep the problem was. And the findings of the research uh, clearly confirmed that the few cases that were coming to our office were just the tip of the iceberg. We have discovered that extortion and violence against hawkers are bedfellows in a most sinister way. Samuel Mbogwa's actual name does not register here on the streets. Mbogwa ni ananitaka matejako. Angina ananitaka general. Hello kaku. Eh leo era. Kaya kaya. His street name is more than just a nickname and it doesn't take long to see why. He and a few other men working under him alert the hawkers anytime they see an inspectorate van. General says he and his men are at the service of the many hawkers avoiding the clutches of the Kanjo. Kila siku tulikuwa tunapatia so moja moja. Inachukuliwa na mtu mmoja anapewa 
but it wasn't always this way. General claims that he and his men were bribe collectors for the inspectorate officers. <laughs> The claims were that General and his men would split the money collected between themselves and inspectorate officers. These claims would have been easy to dismiss were it not for this. This clip was recorded in October 2015. Julius Ocheng, one of the five inspectorate officers we know to have been extorting bribes, is seen here. In this clip, they are negotiating the terms on which they will operate. And it would seem the main occupation of these inspectorate officers is to maintain their under-the-table deals, exactly like those described by the general. Julius is Wasiwasi's right-hand man. Later though, general says that something went wrong. <laughs> Before he knew it, he too would be at the wrong end of the inspectorate's wrath. And on the streets, the injuries get worse and worse, with the officers using anything at their disposal to cause harm. Poking sahi me kwa risk, it's like you run for yourself. It's kya kanjo na toke aju. Mostly ato wa mama wa gobi wana wamagia machakula, wana dunga watu visu wa mama wana gongwa, wana chukua vitu zao kwa kwa. And challenging them can be very dangerous. On this evening, one of our whistleblowers came across this young man who had just been assaulted by inspectorate officers. Fighting back pain from his stab wound in his buttocks, he narrates what happened. The research confirmed that uh, the torture, the the murders, the 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 extortion, especially the extortion, is very high and is systemic. It's not uh, acts of particular individuals, isolated, uh, isolated act of uh, particular individuals. This is systemic within the inspectorate department. He is put into a taxi and rushed out of town to a hospital where hundreds of records dispute the claim that inspectorate officers act within the law. One chapter in the tragic story of the hawkers who are assaulted on a daily basis by city inspectorate Askaris winds up here at the Kiambu Hospital. Because if you don't pay up, you often get stabbed, injured, or worse, you could die. 
Dr. Kevin Nguringa has worked at the Kiambu District Hospital for four years. He's seen it all. How many cases in total would you say have come from the Kiambu? I'd say probably 300. 300 cases. More than just assault, in the injuries that the hawkers have often come into the hospital with, there's a pattern. I know that no county employee ever takes law into their hands and beats people, maims them, or knifes them. At the records department, it's clear that not only have hawkers been targeted, but that almost every injury is worse than the last. When the hawkers come in, they sometimes describe three to five Ascaris that are known to do that, and they say they are from Nairobi area, because most of the injuries that we sustain uh, in the accident and emergency are from Nairobi area. And I was actually surprised at one time when I was filling the medical reports, uh, the, uh, the hawkers would say, there is this certain Ascari who is known to do this, and as even uh, they would report some of their colleagues, some of the hawkers had uh, died from these uh, injuries and that Ascari is known to them but nothing is done at the city hall which I found to be surprising and maybe it would go like one month without sustaining getting any injuries to the abdomen and then they come back again and when they describe the story to me uh, we would find out it's still the same the same Ascari's. I don't I we have, we have got no such kind of a condition in within our starting orders we don't provide knives for operation purpose and that one, if somebody goes to engage himself, that is his own making of operations, but not what is allowed. How many times do you see stab wounds, knife wounds? Um, two. Two stab wounds. Out of those seven cases, I would probably see two stab wounds. Two stab wounds. Yeah, two stab wounds. So about two stab wounds every week? Uh, yeah, every week. Uh, in the course of the duty, the only equipment that you are supposed to carry for specific kind of officers, it is only the small button or the riot button in case of riot or the long button. This is what you are supposed to use because in any kind of uh, uh, effecting an arrest or executing the duties, you are supposed to use what you call the minimal force. And I've said that uh, Bonanam. He was, was a young man. Uh, I think in his mid, uh, middle age, I mean middle age man, uh, who was brought in by his fellow hawkers, uh, came confused, uh, had sustained uh, injuries to the abdomen from a sharp object uh, that later we came to realize was a, a knife, knife injury. Uh, we did the first basic uh, life support and tried to rehydrate the patient and stabilize the patient. But the injuries were so severe that uh, he, he, after 30 minutes, he, he succumbed to his injury. We have names of tens of hawkers whose injury reports we received that we counter-checked at the records department. We also record all these cases in an occurrence book that, uh, that, can, be, that can be verified or the information can be gotten. Uh, beyond that, when they come for the medical report, uh, what they tell us is that they report to the police. But probably to my thinking is nothing happens because if, you, if every week you're still getting the same cases happening over and over again, then the question becomes, you, you writing a medical report, you're filling a, a P3 form that should go to the police, but uh, yet nothing is happening. So There's a report that uh, was issued about a year ago um, detailing specific instances of violence perpetrated by officers who can be named. Um, have you received any reports of this, of this nature? Yes, we've received reports, but so far nobody has come out to give evidence. But also we know that the people who are targeted are those fastidious officers, the people who work with zeal and zest. They're the ones who are normally targeted so that they are removed. But the one thing we cannot tolerate is anybody who takes the law into their own hands. Actually, the hawkers who come, yeah. and in a majority of the cases, the ones who sustain severe injuries, they describe these individuals who collect money from them, 
in order for them to be able to sell their goods along the Nairobi streets. Out of the names that the hawkers often say are behind these injuries, Wasiwasi and Tall Brown's names come up quite often. The medical records alone would make for compelling evidence against the officers that have been variously named as having been behind the violence, except that for one year, the file with statements and evidence against the officers sat at the Kamkunji police station. Nothing was done. In that time, injuries turned into fatalities. James Maina Kamundia was shot dead along Kilome Road. John Kimani Moshoki was killed in Ngara. And Harun Joroge Ngogi died from stab wounds. This is the funeral of Harun Joroge Ngugi. Harun is just one of the many faces lost to the grave. He allegedly was murdered by officers from the inspectorate. When he was taken to hospital, he was still alive. Just who has been doing the killing of hawkers is an open secret. And when pushed to the wall, the hawkers' response has been violent. The hawkers have now hired gangs to fight back against officers of the city inspectorate. Gangs that are composed of the hawkers themselves as well as criminals. The hawkers have to pay the gangs a protection fee. And it's their job to stand between the hawkers and the inspectorate giving the hawkers time to flee with their goods. But even here, one man is the focus of their anger. And the inspectorate has struck back. Our whistleblower interviewed the wife of one of the gang members about an ordeal she went through at the hands of Wasi Wasi. Mm. 
The orgy of violence reached its crescendo in Gara. Hoka Irungu Kamau was stabbed to death. After his funeral, Hawkers made a complaint to Nairobi Senator Mike Sonko. After a year of waiting, Wasiwasi, Julius and Tall Brown were arrested. Every mention of this case saw hawkers pack the courtrooms eager to see the faces of the men they claim had tormented them for so long. Yes. Huh? Yes. Why don't we agree that your representatives appear on your behalf instead of everybody coming? You only saw? Yes, Nugu. Yes. <laughs> the week after this investigative series began, the three were released on bond. But this isn't where the story ends. In the final episode of Kanjo Kingdom, we get access to records that show us where the money collected on the streets is going. Records that see the net of beneficiaries of extortion and cruelty widen. And, and it's quite likely, uh, in fact, evidence suggests that the motivation, uh, the motivation for these uh, Homicides, uh, acts of assassination, precisely uh, it's, it's, it's well, uh, commercial, commercial purposes. Uh,